Hi, this is Mike Shackelford with the Wizard of Odds website, and I'm here with Angela Wyman and Dan Lubin to try to teach you the rules of blackjack and how to play. Now let's start with how do you actually get started playing. Um, for that, Dan here is a dealer. Perhaps you'd like to explain it. Okay, well, uh, I guess in every gambler's life there was a first time that they walked up to the table and knew, you know. And we're here to discuss that for the brand new gambler. Firstly, you, sh you could get a little familiar with blackjack by playing it online and trying that, the game out that way and reading up on it before actually approaching the table as a 100% novice. I do recommend you know, playing online uh, at free sites or reviewing Mike's site, uh, the wizardofodds.com, and just familiarizing yourself with the game before jumping on the table. Now, for the first time you come to a table, uh, do yourself and every player a favor and just watch the game for a few moments. You'll see that there are periods that there are cards out on the table where there are transactions occurring and that there are times when the cards are scooped up and there's a lull in the action. And that lull is your cue to buy in. For example, when there's cards and the dealer is dealing and they change one, you know, you don't want to do that. Let the dealer finish the hands, take and pay. And when the dealer is finished and the cards are scooped up and discarded into the discard rack, that's your opportunity to take a seat, reach into the table with your buy-in money, or let's say a hundred dollar bill or, or three twenties, and say, can I have some change I'd like to play? That's the time you do it. When the cards are scooped up, the table is empty, and there's an available seat, that's your opportunity to come in. I'd like to join the table, change $100 is what you say, and the deal will cut out $100. And basically you'll get a stack of red chips, 20 red chips for $100. And the deal will pass it off to you and take your money and drop it in the drop box. Now the deal will swipe the table and say place your bets, and at that point you take your bet and you put it into the round circle, and if you want an additional side bet, you bet them also. And then, on a face-up game, which would have a shoe like this, the dealer begins dealing. Let's say you have a chip here, right? You will use your knowledge of blackjack to whether to hit for a card or to stay. Uh, if you've read up on basic strategy on the internet, you will pretty much know what to do. When the cards are dealt face up, never touch the cards or anything like that or pull your bet back. That if you want a card, you tap the table and another card would be dealt. And you would keep on hitting until you were satisfied. Then you would wave off to say no more cards. You don't speak your commands such as, I need another card or I'm good. You basically have to show the commands to the dealer, such as hit for another card or stay, so that the camera and the floor people can understand what's going on at the game. Some things I'd like to add to what you said is that if it's a double deck game or a single deck game, you have to wait until the dealer shuffles the cards. Um, you can't jump in, even if it's in between hands, uh, because most places have a no mid-round, oh, mid-shoe entry rule. Furthermore, even if they didn't have that rule, it's kind of considered bad etiquette to jump into the middle of a single or a double deck game. Um, Before the shuffle. If you intend to play, it's fine to sit down, but just sit there quietly, let the hand finish out or wait for the shuffle, whatever the case is, then when you can buy in, then present your money. Don't do it early because the dealer's just going to say, you know, wait a minute. Right. You don't need to tell the dealer what kind of denominations you want. I never mention it. Some players do. Usually the player, I mean the dealer, will, you know, see your buy-in and be able to judge what you, what, what you want. For example, if you buy in with 500, he's probably going to give you, I would imagine... 400 in green. Yeah, and 100 in red. Or 90 in red and 10 in white, so you can mm -hmm. take the dealer and the cocktail away. I think it's a good idea to get some whites right up at the front for tipping purposes, which I think is appropriate, especially with the cocktail waitresses. Um, that way you just get it all out of the way at the beginning. You've got your change all set. You're ready to play. So 
what happens if I throw my credit card up there in front of you? You are SOL, <laughs> basically. Very bad etiquette. Well, what you do is you just take your credit card or your bank card, go to one of the numerous ATM machines on the casino floor and pull out some cash. You don't see this very often, but I think it's very rude to present like a crumpled up bill. You know, I think that you should present all your money nicely in one pile. And let the dealer spread out the money and then cut out the checks. Mm -hmm. He hands you the checks, he drops the money into the box, and you are ready to play.